of going and landing on this place which is totally kind of isolated, you know, and I feel that it'll just kind of round off our trip around Namibia. But the problem is, of course, it's not in Namibia, it's in Angola. Let's quickly assess the risks. We're not allowed to go there. Yeah. Because so, it's another country. Yes. And it's a national park. Yes. We haven't got customs. Yeah. Or immigration. This yeah. quality is bad, isn't it? Eh? I mean, it doesn't feel like a really lovely, clear, still day no, to go no. and la out land somewhere you're not so sure about it. Eh? Yeah, we got 25 knot tailwind. It's fucking howling down here. We could get arrested and our aircraft impounded. Okay. Mm. We could have an accident on the island and no, that could we be. Really are we are isolated. Okay, this is where the peninsula ran out, eh? This is, the, is this? this is it. This is the what was the peninsula. Oh yeah, here it ends. Okay, so we're going to climb. Okay, we're climbing. One thing I don't want to be flying low level across the sea. I mean, the chance of having an engine failure is about 0.0001, right? I, I can see the island. You see it? What mystical up there in the mist, eh? But if it happens and we land in the sea, we, yeah, we are dead. I think we should go direct. No, we're not. I'm in charge of the flying today. What a pity, man. This is the one way I've been able to keep myself alive so yeah. far. Whereas a lot of friends that have got, you know, big egos and all these kind of things are <laughs> dead. There's the town. James, town. People. The town of São Martinho dos Tigres was established in the 1940s to exploit the fish-rich waters of the Bay of Tigers on this lonely, barren coast. Baby, oh, wow. Like in the shape of a boat. Quite beautiful, eh? At its peak in 1960, the town supported a large fishing fleet and a bunch of fish processing factories and a population of 1,500 souls. None of whom appear to have stuck around. Nobody here at all. Completely abandoned. There's quite a biggie because we're out here completely on our own. And if we bugger this one up, then we're not going to get rescued in a hurry. Actually, we're going to spend a long, probably the rest of our lives here. Yeah, in an, in an Angolan jail. <laughs> But the Skeleton Coast reputation is not for nothing. In the early 60s, a massive storm severed the water supply, as well as the peninsula on which Sao Martinho sat from the mainland. Definitely going to be the longest time I've ever spent in church. Overnight, Sao Martinho became an island town on a giant barren sand dune. Now 10 kilometers off one of the most inhospitable coastlines on the planet. Jesus, I can't believe it. <laughs> A diminishing population struggled against the elements for another decade before leaving their homes one day in October 1974, never to return. The Angolan Civil War had arrived at Baia dos Tigres. <laughs> Here there are constant reminders right, right. Right? of the frailty of the living. <laughs> You're gonna be alright. I want to touch you because I don't want to hurt you. No, no, no. And the are so far away here. It's, it's really, it's going slow. Shit. I'm 
if something goes wrong, pull me up on that amp. That's fine. Something, if something goes badly wrong, then it's just trouble. So you've actually got to be ready. That old step fell off. I just heard it. Take a bah. The concrete broke, eh? From the outside, with the lights on on your head torch, you can see the shape of the steeple and just the shape of all these church windows. It really lends this place quite a spooky feeling. I mean, you know, it's an interesting thing. When we decided we're going to like sleep in the in the church, right? Mm. I had a little moment of like, ooh, is this the right thing? <laughs> is this the right thing to be doing? The wind dropped with the coming of the night. Under a full moon, we headed off on a post in a stroll. It was surreal, this dead town. Then it got kind of spooky. In the middle of nowhere, all of a sudden, this lone, fresh set of footprints. We were like, huh? The nearest human settlement is hundreds of kilometers away. Who the hell had made these? And where were they now? Our walk last night was interesting, eh, Mike? Yeah. Quite nerve wracking, man. I mean, I mean, it's quite kind of spooky to find barefoot footprints, fresh. Yeah. On the side of the road, middle of nowhere. Uh -huh. And there's just no one here. Well, there was definitely somebody here at least one day ago, if not yesterday morning. Quite an odd feeling. You know, one has to be careful here because this stuff can collapse. Yeah, I wouldn't go in there like that if I was you. I already fell once. Ah, look at, look at the writing here. Paya dos Tigres. I imagine that these are all the factory workers' houses, the little ones, you know, with maybe a communal living area there in the center. And all of the little houses on stilts. I mean, what's the reason for that? Definitely, so the sand can go in underneath. If they're not on stilts, then what will happen eventually, I'm sure, is that the house will be covered like this one. You come out in the morning and you can't open your front door. <laughs> I see our company last night was here as well. Yeah, that was uh, 30 years, 50 years ago. He's dead, that guy. I'm pleased to report he's smaller than me. If there's a fight, I think I've got a good chance. Should we go to the graveyard? Yeah. Let's go and have a look. I feel as if I'm back at the pyramids at Giza or something. <laughs> Sand and sarcophagi. Sounds like a title of a book. My trip to Biodos Tigres. My trip because uh, Mike died while we were there. Luckily, I found a good grave for him. Once out of town, it becomes pretty evident why they call this place Bay of Tigers. I was left wondering how the townsfolk might have felt, standing here observing these seemingly endless stripes, living on a dune in the middle of an unrelenting sea. I mean, there must have been a bunch of young men working in this fish factory. I suppose young men and women. Yeah, and fa uh, all families, for sure. You can see it's a whole little town, you know. Born, lived, died right here. And came far away to try and make their fortunes. And they must have had their hopes and dreams and expectations for life. I mean, we all have our own hopes and dreams. I love the way that everything is weathered, you know, there's a texture to absolutely everything. I'm putting this guy's gravestone back up for him. It's just lovely, the rounded shapes of the wood, absolutely everything. Look at the rust, the sign of the nail that was there before. The graves are the signs of the people that were here before. To come to a place like this reminds you that you're just in a snapshot of history. James. And you'll pass on 
Your children will carry on and their children's children. I just found this guy's finger bone. <laughs> Was he bigger than you or smaller than you? Same size as me. You know, there's that German theory. I've been reading a little bit about phrenology and those things from the Germans. And I can see from this finger bone that this guy was cleverer than you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm going to dust to dust. His finger bone goes back into the sand nicely. And I'm putting his cross up for him again. Okay, that'll do. Put the cross nice and straight. When his family come from Lisbon to visit him, they'll be delighted to see his cross still standing. Mm. And know that his finger's back in the sand. <laughs> Jose Alfredo Vieira, who chased a hundred girls on Bayados Tigres and succeeded in loving only one, was married for 60 years and had eight children. Mm. He's buried here. And those children are busy conquering the world. If, if they're Portuguese, that's not the case. <laughs> hey, whoa! Check the machinery. Wow, man, this is amazing. This is expensive stuff, just like abandoned. Yeah. Okay, James, stand back. And I heard something. <laughs> like I say, Mike, you're an optimist. There's no way we could have made it back to Joburg before dark, so we decided to spend our last night in Namibia just like our first. Now this time we felt like veterans of wild landings in the desert, but you should never rest on your laurels. Okay, shit, it's the sun's going down. Okay, what do you think of the ground over there? what you call a spontaneous landing. Okay, land! <laughs> I mean, I remember learning. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta like, do an inspection. Good one, my friend. Nice landing. Nice choice. It's at these moments, Michael, that I realise how much I love you when you bring me tea in bed. <laughs> <laughs> if we land up doing a trip right around Africa, what we should do is make special aircraft for this. Yeah, I mean, it, it would be our home for, how long do you think? A year. A year. We travel through Africa for a year. The thing is, we've been at it flat out for eight years. Yeah. Without a break. I mean, without a break, except uh, there was the trip around the world that we took. And then the other trip around the world, of course. And then there was the one to Oshkosh. <laughs> and remember you and I went to Europe. Oh, yeah. You're and of course there lot. were the two Africa trips. <laughs> <laughs> James, and then... Alois Najani Alois Najani Kukut 